Welcome to the Don Lane Show, seen throughout Australia on the National Nine Network. And now, here's Don! deal with humanity's woes. I'd rather see the guy with the fly on his nose. My, my mission, my burning ambition is I want to make the world laugh. Some have a meaning, a dark hidden meaning, but I want to make the world laugh. Let all those directors feel tragic romance, but I like the hero with ants in his pants. Nothing I found is as sweet as that sound is The music that fattens the cat My great new plot is not about tyranny's lash It deals with itching powder and papa's mustache This curse I've been blessed with, completely possessed with is I wanna make the world As sweet as the sound is, the music that fattens the cat. My great new plot is not about tyranny's lash. It deals with itching powder and papa's mustache. This curse I've been blessed with, completely possessed with is. I wanna make the world laugh. But I want to make the world laugh. I want to make the world laugh. I don't believe it. Yeah, but you just get that there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
you just get that little phone? <laughs> just get that phone. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hi. Hi. Good stuff. Okay. That was just my luck. That's the first Dropbox that Max ever made that worked. <laughs> it's got to land on me, right? I got everything else. Anyway, well, here we are. This is the last show of the year, and we're going to be here tonight for two hours. <laughs> just what I need—a masochist in the second row. Uh, we'll be here for two hours, and there's going to be surprises, and we hope a lot of fun. I think there will be, and I think you at home will enjoy yourselves, and uh, you people in here will definitely enjoy yourself. Yeah. Especially when you have to take all your... Oh, never mind, we won't talk about it. <laughs> and have we got a lineup of guests tonight? If everybody gets on, we should finish just in time for Hey, Hey, It's Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and speaking of that, by the way, Daryl Summers is here tonight. You know, he's gonna... Okay. And, uh... Our extra special guest tonight, and a lot of you women in this audience will remember him. In fact, a lot of you people, you see his movies. Our special guest, one of the most dashing leading men ever to appear in movies, the very handsome Stuart Granger. Really <laughs> That's what we and uh, we're also going to be visited by two of the stars of the latest James Bond movie. It's called For Your Eyes Only. Uh, two of the stars, one of them, Topol, who a lot of you remember from Fiddler on the Roof. He played... Uh, uh, the lead in Fiddler on the Roof, and a very glamorous lady, Australian lady, Cassandra Harris, will be here tonight, too. And, uh, the James Bond movie fans. Are you James Bond? I'm, I love James Bond. I think it's terrific. All of the thrills and action and shooting and all of that. You always see those scenes, you know, one man on a large waterbed surrounded by a dozen or more half-naked women, you know? I think I just worked out how I'm going to spend my holidays. I, I, I do. <laughs> Peter Russell Clark has cooked up something special for us as a lot of guests. Pete Smith will show us some of the movies that will be on over the Christmas break, particularly those ones that the kids will want to see. You know, those ones they show at holiday time, like Naughty and the Nutty and <laughs> Willy Wonka and the Massage Parlor. You know, you get all this. <laughs> and Kevin Arnett will give us some startling predictions for next year. My favorite funny person, Tim Evans, has something for us. A violinist, Peter Lowe, is back with us tonight. She's going to play a, a duet with uh, Jeff Hales, our musical conductor and the Peter Couples Band will perform, and we've invited some Channel 9 personalities and their dogs to have them go through some paces with our very special guest, dog trainer supreme, Barbara Woodhouse. And, uh, <laughs> so, oh, hey, hey, what's up? Hey, hey, hey. What are you doing? This is, uh... This is my... yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Got... This is my dog, Don, and it's one dog that Mrs. That's... Woodhouse won't need to see because he's, wait a minute, he's a... very well trained. This is your... Are you going to go through the lessons with her? To well, I, the... I don't really need to, Don, huh? but I... this is, this is yeah. Bark, by the way. This is who? Where is he? Hello, how are you? Man? That's Bark how there. How are you doing? Very and nice to very, see very you. very, very well trained. Yes, he certainly is. Sit. Sit. Sit, Ooh. Bark. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I think he did it right. Hey, we'll be back with Stuart Granger. Hang in there. <laughs> been out there picking things off me for about an hour. I feel like a chicken has been plucked. Uh, whoops. <laughs> if that man hatches anything, we're in trouble. <laughs> Stuart Granger achieved great success in his home country, uh, England, with his first film called The Man in Grey. Now, in the 50s, he went to Hollywood, where he became one of their top romantic leads. Uh, the teeth-flashing, swashbuckling, dashingly handsome hero became famous with such movies as The Prisoner of Zenda and Bo Brummel and, of course, the classic Scaramouche. And then there was King Solomon's Mines, where introduced to the world the safari look. Everybody wanted to look that way. In true Hollywood style, uh, he went on to uh, fame and fortune, and he made hay while the sun shone with some of the biggest names in the movie capital. 
And he tells all in his recently released autobiography. As the years have gone on, he's decided to uh, write about his memoirs. It's called Sparks Fly Upward. I'd like you to meet him and give him a nice greeting. I think you'll enjoy it. Stuart Granger here. <laughs> big you are. You said the same thing in your book, as a matter of fact, about John Wayne. Oh, I John, mean. yeah, but I mean, uh, really not you've it. got elegant hands. Yeah? John had big hands. <laughs> big head, big... <laughs> yes, everything, <Yeah>. right. <laughs> well, listen, we'll talk about meeting him in a second, but first, tell yeah. me about the book now. It's called Sparks Fly Upward. Yeah. Where did you get that you from? You know why? No. Uh, well, it's from the book of Job. Oh. Not that I read the Bible that much, but it is from the book of Job. Man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. And this uh -huh. is a book of trouble. Mm. I seem to attract trouble. Yeah, but throughout it all, there was this great weaving of a great deal of success for Stuart Granger. I mean, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, I mean, you had problems, but a lot of them were yeah. personal problems with women or other things. Mm, women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little, a little, don't we all? Uh, but men, mostly heads of studios. I'm a rebel, you see. Aren't you yeah. a rebel? I love to fight, you know. Mm. I don't do what I'm told. Did so you, did you like find that they tried to dictate almost all yeah. parts of your way of life in those days? It was the days of the sure. contract player, too, yeah, wasn't sure, it, at that time? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I thought I was a fan. I was a big fan when I was a kid. And uh, my gods, my heroes, you know, you know, my talk, you know, what, I go way back, Rudolf Valentino. I thought that they were so powerful, you see, and they weren't. They were pushed around by the studios. The people who were powerful were the studios. Right, you know. yeah. I mean, Clark Gable had to do what he was told, otherwise he was suspended. Mm. And the whole deal was to get you in debt, right? Yeah. So you earned money, and then they'd say, your next film is that, and you said, I don't want to do that. And they say, Jim, you don't do it, you're suspended, and you just bought your wife a coat, and you, you know, you mm. own the car and the house. Because in those days, another thing is, <clears throat> I was coming down from New York, with uh, Dustin Hoffman, you know? Are you hot out there? Oh, yeah. You are a little warm <laughs> a bit yeah, dusty, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, he's dressed in a T-shirt and a pair of blue jeans, which was great. It was comfortable for traveling. But in our day, we had to be dressed, you know. That's right. right. You, you had know, to carry had to, that image with yeah, you wherever yeah, you sure. went. Yeah, And that sure. cost, you see? Yeah. And also, we had 90% tax. Everybody thinks we're very rich. 90% tax, you know? Yeah. Now it's only 50 now. Mm -hmm. You pay 50, don't you? I don't know what they pay here anymore. I have people. Oh, here, here. There. I don't know here. Oh, yeah. No, no, I mean in America. Yeah. Well, I haven't paid. Well, I better not <coughs> talk about no, that. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me about the, more, more. Did you have contempt for those days, or did you, uh, did you love them? Uh, no, in a way. You see, the funny thing about the book is, I thought I hated, I hated being a film star. Mm. I loved acting. I loved the film industry. I didn't like being a star. But you would have liked the notoriety. I mean, the extra no, special things no, you gave. You no. didn't. Oh. No. Well, you know damn well that. Anonymity is the one thing you don't realize that you like until you've lost it. Right, yeah. You know, that you can't go anywhere. You, everywhere you go, they say, hey, there's Don, you know, and they point at you, and you know, after a time, it gets you down. And that's why film stars of those days hid away in the hills in, in, in houses with guards and everything, because they, mm. you know, it wasn't that they didn't like people, but they, they're sick of, of people pointing and saying, can I, can I, have, can I mm. could I kiss you? Know? <laughs> no, it's sweet in the, in the, I'm signing books now, you know? Did yeah, you make right. any enemies with this book, by the way? Uh, no. You know, people, because no. you talk about it. My two people. wives. Yeah. Funnily enough, hey, that's a, that's an Aussie tie. A little kangaroo on yeah, there. Yeah, a kangaroo. Your two wives. No, my two wives, actually, the, the first one, you see, I, was, I wrote the book in my daughter's house. I bought my daughter a house and, and cut it into two. And mm. she has an apartment up top. And I had an apartment down below so she could make some money. Mm. And she rented the apartment down below to mm. her mother. So I'm writing upstairs. And her mother is calling up saying, what have you written about me now? You know, and I'd have oh, to read I what yes. I, oh, that's all right. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and Jean, whom I hadn't talked to, we hadn't been great friends. Jean Simmons was talking Simmons, about, yeah. who you were married <clears throat> to, yes. I hadn't been great friends with hers for some time because she married somebody I wasn't terribly fond of. And <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I couldn't stand the son of a... Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, she rang me suddenly, floods of tears, and she said, oh, it's so lovely. 
you know, it takes me back, and we did love each other, and we did have fun, and you write so sweetly, and I hear you're coming to Hollywood, so you come and stay with me. So mm. I went back, and everybody's saying, oh, he's gone back to it. No, I haven't gone back to it, but I mean, we're great friends, which is the main thing. I think you must be friends with your wives. If you've loved them at one time, why the hell not? <laughs> it's much better. I mean, it's a nice idea. Hey, there she is. Yes, there yeah. you are, that's yeah. true, is she, uh, of course, uh, there was a, a great deal of drama between you and Howard Hughes over oh, her, because uh, he kept trying to pursue her, didn't he? Well, he had, you see, Mike, Mike Wilding and Liz Taylor stayed with us yeah. when they, before they were married with me and Jean. And then this mad marriage, you know, in the book, there's this mad marriage arranged by Howard Hughes through <laughs> Cary Grant, because in those days, you know, it was a big thing, two stars getting married, and we had mm. to sort of run away otherwise. Luella Parsons would, would get it, and, and then Hedda Hopper would be upset, and all that, you know, that nonsense. And um, this man, he was incredible. He, anyway, he grabbed Jean, he put her under contract, and our agent said, you must get to know him, you know, must be nice, because he's a sweet guy. You see, yeah. and Howard, we thought, was a nice, gangling, pathetic character, and he used to come and see, and these two girls, you see, Howard liked one thing, he liked the ladies, you know, that way. And Jean and That's Liz had... Oh, yeah, sure. Very nice, and he used to stand in front of them and sort of, uh, and they were sitting on the couch and, 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 yeah, and looked down. Yeah. And Mike and I, thinking we're playing with a sort of rather pathetic character, said, uh, Howard, which would you like? You know, he'd, <laughs> he'd turn around and say, well, Jim, goddamn, I can't make up my mind. He said, well, you're not going to get either of them. We thought we were teasing yeah. an idiot. We were teasing a cobra. Mm, this yeah, is a it's cobra. a very dangerous man, he turned out to And be. eventually, it's a long story, but mm. eventually I planned to kill him. You know, seriously planned to kill Howard Hughes because he was ruining Gene's career. He was ruining our marriage. And... I was rather drunk at the time, and I said, you know, mm -hmm. we got to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> I worked out a plan, which Gene agreed to, then and went to bed and passed out, and the next morning woke up with a terrible hangover, <laughs> and saw this darling little girl sleep, and I said, Jeannie, um, wake her up, you know, do you know what we were talking about last night? And she said, yes, darling. We were planning to kill somebody, you know. Mm. And she said, yes, darling. I said, we can't do that. And she said, no, of course not. I said, well, why did you agree last night? She said, because I knew you'd change your mind in the morning. morning that's right. That's right. <laughs> anyway, there is that and many, many names and a lot of very interesting stories. I've been through this. It's a terrific book. It really is. I love it. And well, I'll put it over here like so it. everybody can have a look at it. Yeah. Sparks fly upward. Stuart Granger. And, and I'm uh, signing at the Maya Emporium. Are you? The Maya Emporium uh, tomorrow? Yeah. You'll be able to see him in put person. Put your name on it. Listen, I, um, I want you to look at something, because I think you'll have yeah. some fun with this. Yeah. We have a fellow that works here called Pete Smith. Yeah. And Pete goes out sometimes and he talks with kids, you know? Yeah. And uh, he's talking with kids about Christmas. And uh, I think he'll get some laughs out of this. Just have a look. Here's yeah. Pete Smith talking to some kids. Take a look. Well, Justin, where did the idea of Christmas get started? Ah, oh, at North Pole. And so we were for Christmas, which he used to make wooden toys and um, cars and trucks and all sorts of things. Well, Samuel, where do you think Christmas got started? America. <laughs> what does Christmas mean to you, Sasha? If you're good, you get a book. <laughs> if you're bad, you get a dirty book. If, you get a, if you're good, you get a nice, clean book. <laughs> What do you do when you wake up on Christmas morning? What's the first thing you do? Get up and ask Mummy at five o'clock if we can open our presents. And what does she say? She says, OK, but then you've got to go back to bed. Do you ever go back to bed? No. James, do you think God gets a Christmas present? Mm hmm. What would he get for Christmas? Um, a, a person to fix up. <laughs> Jeff, what would you give Bert Newton for Christmas? A book full of gags. I think that's... That's such a lovely statement, that last kid, isn't it? Out of the mouths of babes, did you hear what that little kid said? Take some notice of that. What does God get for a Christmas present? A person to fix up. Well, sure, I wouldn't think of that. Yeah. Stuart, lovely to meet you. Lovely, thank oh, you. Pleasure, much. and you'll be at the Meyer Emporium signing a book. Oh, yeah. And if you'd like to meet Stuart Grayson in person, and he's a beaut guy, you can do it over there, okay? <laughs> Bert will be back here with some uh, new and unusual products. Pete Lowe and Jeff Hale's going to play a duet and a lot more show. Hang in there. We're coming back. <laughs> Thank 
I just saw him in the corridor. You know, autographs and all that. I I, of course, I gave it to him. Did you? Yes. <laughs> I didn't get to ask him about. It. He was the first one to let his temples go gray. Do you remember that movie? He let them go gray. No. Every no, other actor no, touched no, the no. hero. Bette Davis was the first. Bette Davis. Bette Davis. <laughs> Don, new and unusual. Yes. Here's my case, right? Yes. Tonight I've got something which is not necessarily uh, new for you. New. No. But certainly unusual. Have you no. noticed a special guest we have in our studio audience? How can you evening? help but notice it? He keeps waving at me all night. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and our new extraordinaire from right. the Nine Network, Sir Eric Pierce. Yeah. <laughs> Loud, loud noises disturb him. <laughs> you right there? Don't believe it. That's the first time I've ever seen him walk on his own. He's OK. <laughs> and this is the latest he's been up in months. Let me this see. Is How are you? Are you OK? Yeah. It's OK, Don. We have a trained nurse in the audience. Well, yeah. Congratulations, Don. It was a very lovely interview. We're, we're still great. done a few. Yes, I have. Yes. yes. Sure. Very, very nice to see you again. Sir. Thank you. I'm over here. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we gag about Sir Eric and his age. I might mention to you, Sir Eric is magnificent for his age. I saw his driver's license recently, and it's number three. <laughs> Do you know something, Eric? You know... <laughs> he knows nothing what about have this. I've got my crutches in there. I've got. <laughs> you know very well they're in the audience. I have got in this box something which you haven't seen in a long. Now, don't peek oh, in, don't spoil everything. <laughs> Not many people know that Sir Eric actually served in the First World War. He went from trench to trench saying, God bless you, and you... <laughs> There's a little something for you. Yeah. Where'd you get this? Here is a little something for you. Oh. Now, it's not generally known, but Eric Pierce is a fine violinist, <laughs> believe me. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I happen to go through the cards here at Channel Line, and over the years you've played many melodies. Would you like to tune up, Eric? No. OK, thank God for that. Righto. He's not going to tune up. And I saw on your card, with a wonderful arrangement by Hector Crawford, you played once or twice or three times April Showers. Would you like to hear Sir Eric Pierce with April Showers? Please, please. I sang April Showers, may I say? Well, I tell you what, what about the other arrangement that was done by Hector Crawford? Um, I love you truly. I love you truly. I can do that, yes, I think. Uh, what I, what, how's it go? Oh, that's one. <laughs> that was <laughs> real. <laughs> Don, let me tell you. Before you came to Melbourne, this was a show. <laughs> <laughs> also, also on your car. Tell me he tap danced too as well. Yes. Uh, but only until he was 75. <laughs> Remember those years when you were 75? Can you hear me okay, Eric? <laughs> I noticed also on your car a wonderful arrangement by our own Jeff Hales of Lieberstrom. Would you play that for us, please? Yes, certainly. Hmm. Now, just, just for, finish off with a, with a quick rendition of, uh, of Hunt. I didn't know that Liebestrom wrote, oh. I love you truly. <laughs> <laughs> Eric thinks he oh, did, I'm so sorry. we just leave it at that. <laughs> Eric, what about, what about you and I combining our talents? Do you, would you have... Would you... <laughs> no. <laughs> I just, you, you fiddle and I'll go and burn Don. <laughs> What about... Do you want to sing What do you, Yes, what do you want? You, but waltzing Matilda. Waltzing Matilda. Well, yes, that's supposed to be a stage whisperer, Eric. Waltzing Matilda. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a great idea. In a Half yes. second. Uh, how's it go? Uh, Point some time. <laughs> <laughs> I love of field and coppice, of green and shaded lanes, of ordered woods and gardens is running in your veins. Strong love of grey blue distance, brown streams and soft dim skies. I know but cannot share it. My love is otherwise. 
I love a sunburn country, a land of sweeping plains, of ragged mountain ranges, of droughts and bloody rains. I tell you what, they're going to have a terrible job to get me off. <laughs> I think you're wonderful to come in on our last show and to put up. So that's all you want. Place. You've got. Thank you, dear. I'm very disappointed in you. They are We don't. We don't mean. Happy it. birthday for tomorrow, by the way. Oh, you see how you. <laughs> hey, look. We have a. We have, a, we have a young lady here that uh, is a great violinist, and we think she's going to go a long way. Have you ever heard of Peter Lowe? Pete, oh, yes, I think I have. Yes, yes. I yes she's coming on very well. Yes. Honey, the West one of the best players in the country. She's, she's over there with she's over there. I with know, Jeff she's Hales. lovely. She's wonderful. And yes. Jeff and she are going to play a duet. Um, Why does Jeff have to be in it? Why can't I? Be? Well, he's MD. There isn't anyone else played clarinet. Oh, he's, you want to be it with him? Uh, two, two violins. He's playing 18th century <laughs> drawing. You know, <laughs> da, 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 da. Remember that one? Maybe we could have that. Maybe we could have you on the next time. May and, I just and you... stay here and, and Certainly. And I'll hold so you would up, Would you like Eric. us to help you? Can... <laughs> you you're okay, my girl. Don't worry. Come on, over here. There we are. Humpty Dumpty, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> Say hello to this fine talent, Peter Lowe and Jeff Hales. Here you are. Right. Thank you. You are uh, a, a very... I love you too. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
He's a wonderful face, and it's such a comfort. Hang on a sec. You're not getting to keep that, you old devil. Is that a Stradivarius? That's a Stradivarius. Yes? Okay. Thank you. Yes, you'll keep the... So Eric Pierce, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back with Kevin Arnett and Peter Russell. Thank you very much. These soft balls. Yes, with these soft balls. Oh. <laughs> so quietly. What are you gonna play a quiet game of ping pong? If you want to have a quiet game. Okay. Okay. The net comes by the way in pieces. This so it'll fit any table. Ah, oh, and it won't scratch anything. Then. Won't scratch or mark anything. Okay. Like a little game. This is Stunk of Family Ping Pong. Okay. One, two, three. Do we get to play? Do, it now? do you want a bat? It'd be nice if I had a bat. Okay, fine. Okay. <laughs> I saw you with a bat last week. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Shh. Just watching you. Yes. Sorry. It's okay, I've got plenty of them. Oh, yeah. I'll say you do. <laughs> this is, this is Tonka Family Ping Pong. And it's, Shh. it's, it's see, it's, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. It's very quiet and you can play. Nobody knows. You take the game seriously, don't you? Gently. Right, okay, gently. This is Tonka Family Ping Pong. Shh, the paddles. Tonka Fat! Oh, shh. <laughs> Show me the picture. It's a great family, family you can play it at home on any table, and it goes anywhere, and it doesn't scratch anything, and you'll love Tonka it. Tonka family ping pong. Use the soft ball. Now say something very quiet. Yes. Tonka family ping pong. <laughs> I just, I just broke my rod. We'll be right back. Did you hurt yourself? Yes. Shh. Give us a break. Give us a break. Thank you very much. We thought it would be a good idea to get some predictions for the new year, so uh, who better to give it to us than the person that uh, probably knows more about the new year than we do? Here's Kevin Arnett. Say hello. <laughs> Tell you that you get that in the street, don't you? You told me that the other I never day. go into the city in school holidays because the kids give me hell. Do they? <laughs> from, from the other side of Burke Street, you hear it. Woo! That's right. Do do that? It's right. now my song. Okay, what about the new year? Well, I thought it'd be a nice idea to take a little journey into the future, so without any preamble at all, let's get straight into our predictions for 1982. We're off on our journey right this second. Okay, Here we go. Good. With the second space shuttle about to lift off, our journey into space continues. Now, next year, two more space shuttles will blast off and two more are scheduled for 1983. Then a new space laboratory is going to orbit around the Earth. And now, Don, from shuttles to sheep. Shearing sheep by hand could be a thing of the past. Experiments are underway to inject a substance into sheep which will slow down the growth of their wool. The fibre will be weakened and the entire fleece then could be removed just like a woolen overcoat. Hmm. Isn't that incredible? Now, the year of the mass-produced electric car is getting closer. This experimental model, developed by General Electric and Chrysler, covers up to 200 kilometres before recharging and travels up to speeds of about 150 kilometres an hour. And the cost to run it? 11 cents a kilometre. To recharge Ooh. the car, you simply plug into an ordinary household power point and off it goes oh, again. Oh, you've got to have a long lead. Yeah, that's right. Now, since the jet age, plane travel has become very safe. Air safety will improve further next year because of tests like this one. A plane is crashed into the ground at 150 kilometres an hour, so the design is improved, and in the future, there'll be a greater passenger survival in air crashes. Oh, that's now, in England, where unemployment has grown at an alarming rate, the gap between the haves and the have-nots is widening, unfortunately. The risk of more riots next year is increasing, so how will the police cope with the riots? Riot squads are developing new ways of fighting riots, these two generators each pour out 5,000 cubic feet of foam a minute. Within three minutes, a wall of foam 10 feet high will barricade the street against a rioting mob. Be the, the cleanest, foam, cleanest mob in town. Yeah. It could take, yeah, that's right. We'll be seeing more of this sort of thing, unfortunately, I think, next year. 
Now, on this year, the world's first artificial heart went into a human body. Oh, it kept a 36-year-old Dutchman alive for a week until a human heart could be found. Now, two doctors at the University of Utah hoped to implant an artificial heart into a patient to keep them alive indefinitely in 1982. Oh. Experiments are now being conducted with hearts of steel and with hearts of rubber to go into people. Now, during 1982 also, we'll learn much more about the human brain. Already some brain tumours can be taken out by microsurgery through the ear. Now, some brain surgery will soon be performed with an ice lance, and the ice lance, or ice knife, uses deep freeze treatment to freeze and lift off tumours from delicate nerve and brain centres. Oh, and are some cancers produced by the way we think? Can any be cured by changing our way of thinking? I think Don 1982 might provide some startling answers about cancer. Now, you'll like the next little bit coming up. It's quite possible that a visit to the dentist over the next few years won't involve any drilling. A chemical has been invented that can be sprayed into a cavity, and after a few seconds, the decayed part of the tooth breaks up and you just wash it away. Really? Yep, that's being invented Fantastic. now. Fantastic! Won't that make the dentist popular? Now, robots attached to computers are here, at least in the Fiat factory in Italy. Have a look at this. In this assembly plant, only one human being is needed to sit at a computer terminal. That's all you need. Everything in this factory is now completely automated with robots. Is this silent factory then to be the factory of the future? Now, 1982 could well be the year that an earthquake will split the infamous San Andreas Fault, seriously affecting both San Francisco and Los Angeles. A major eruption is unfortunately well and truly overdue. Many of the experts I've spoken to agree that the big one is not very far off. We live here on the margin of the North American plate, and the Pacific Plate and North American Plate have been moving for tens of millions of years, and it's not going to stop now just because we're here. We have, a, on the average, a big one in the area about every 100 to 150 years. This is uh, based mainly on geologic evidence, so we are counting on another one almost any time. Since 1812, California's had 17 earthquakes, killing over 1,000 people and causing damage at over $7 billion. And, Don, this is one prediction I hope doesn't happen in 1982, but it certainly could. It's mm. on the card. I've been sure of it. You have been? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Would you like to hear... Would you, thank you very much for doing it's that. It's a pleasure. Appreciate it. Would you like to hear my predictions for 1982? You've got some? Yes, I have two. I'll be back on the show? Yeah, no, okay. Oh, oh all right. Oh, yeah, she'll be back on the show. That's, well, that's, that's not a prediction. That's one of your predictions. That's a fact. No. 1982, I predict that Princess Di will have quintuplets. <laughs> and because of that, they'll have to move into a bigger house. <laughs> and I also predict that Australia will have an Irish governor general who will sack himself. <laughs> that's incredible. Yours are better than mine. <laughs> While you do it, say hello to Peter Russell Clark's coming out here to talk to you. Thank you. He's predicted some pretty far out things. What are you predicting uh, today? Uh, I predict as soon as I finish this, I'll have a beer. All right, it's a good idea. <laughs> uh, what right. do we got? Last show, right? Yeah. You deserved a holiday. Come here. Uh, what is that? Tissue? Yeah. You deserve a holiday, right? So, holiday food. Okay. Lee. This looks like a picnic basket. Is that a picnic? Right. Well, yeah. you see, the trouble is, this is true, serious stuff. Holiday time, people don't eat, especially kids. They wake up in the morning, tear off down to the beach chase girls in bikinis, do all that sort of thing. They've had no food. At lunchtime, they don't go home, they buy junk food, uh, and they have a bad time, where really they should have more protein mm. and easy, like, um, sort of portable f food. You know, they're portable people, portable food. So you either eat it first and take it with you in your stomach, or you carry food with you. Mm. So what I think you should do is take food. I'm not going to give you a cook. <laughs> See, you're, you're a lousy cook. Look at the condition of that chuck. <laughs> <laughs> I got this one cooked by somebody else, a friend of mine. Hello, yeah. Margaret. Yeah. Now, so then you get in here, because that's the mouth end there. This is right. the other end. Yes. And, and you get a little chooks like that. You see, that's, that's oh, fried that. because oh, it's yeah. a dog mine. Look at I've got here. another little one here. <laughs> that's, do you recognise it, mate? Wait a minute, can you see, where do I do? Is yeah, this I one? Know. It looks a bit like... You uh, see that one? See? Look at that. <laughs> oh, look at that! Oh, look at... Here's Wait a minute. what's laid these in here. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I tried to get an egg with an extension to get you right on. <laughs> See, that's, uh, that's one for Peter Feynman. Oh, actually. Peter Feynman, yes, look at that. That really says it. 
Which, where am I? Over here. Look at it. <laughs> that's the finger pointing down from the sky. Yes, folks. Pete Smith, that's a oh, very good likeness. Peter Smith, Smith, yes, that's the river. He'll love <laughs> I never knew he had a red S till I met him. It was a thing he had a... What, a red what? S. Red S. S. Yes. You say S. S. Right. I said, yes, right. That's me, I made Kevin. Oh, for Kevin? Yes. That's terrific. Look at... <laughs> Looks like a dunny seat, actually. Yeah. Uh, I do. Ozzy Ostrich. Oh, yes, Ozzy. But Ozzy likes bigger eggs. <laughs> bigger eggs than these, you know? Right. Yeah. And last but not least, Moonface. Wonderful little caricature, Moonface. That's it, is it? That's all we've well, got Well, we tonight. appreciate that. That's really good. And, of course, uh, eggs are the food you can carry around, right? Full of protein, fresh as the daisy, as they say you on the ads. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, mate. You're coming to the party after? My word, I'm yes. going to start now. That's right. That's a good idea. Thank you okay. Peter Russell Clark will be back. Barbara Woodhouse is going to train. Oh, wait a minute. You're, do you're going to train the dog with you, right? Barbara Woodhouse. We'll be back. Don't go away. Yeah. When the floor manager is somewhere else and the lights come on, you're standing here looking at the camera doing nothing, and he goes 10 minutes later. <laughs> they often say that man's best friend is his dog. Well, surely your dog's best friend must be our special guest, who's flown out from England, especially for our final week. She was on the other night. We had a delightful time with her. Tonight, she's going to do what she does best. She's going to show you how she, takes, how she trains these dogs. Please welcome Barbara Woodhouse. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Really good to see you again. <laughs> when the show comes on here, then it'll be something too. As soon as I start looking at your television program, it'll be twice that. Okay, well, why don't you do what you have to do, and uh, I'll, I'll observe and maybe get involved and so forth, okay? Well, what I thought I'd do is... Wait, I, do you I, know our guests, by the way? Well, uh, well let I me don't say. know their names, but I, okay. I know what they look like. Okay, that's Susan, <laughs> Susan Hannaford from, yes. us, from the Sullivans. Yes. Pe yes. Uh, Peter Russell Clark, whom we all know. Megan Williams from yeah. the Sullivans also, yeah. and uh, <laughs> from, from Family Feud, Daryl Summers. Yeah. Daryl Summers from Family Feud. And, uh, and uh, you, you've met Stuart Granger. <laughs> Bert oh, Newton, this God, is... God, no, no, no. He's just right, as lovely. This is Bert, my, my friend. Okay, well, I will just leave you to do what you're going to do. Now, what are we going to do first? Hold on a minute. Shall I tell them what I'm going to do? Yeah? Well, okay. all right. Well, first of all, I'm going to show you that I'm going to take uh, this dog, and then I'll take one like that, and I'll just show you. Uh, I've got a, a, a kind choke train on, so it doesn't hurt, and I don't hold them tightly. Whatever. <laughs> oh, darling, stop that, darling. Stop it. Come on. Yeah. Um, I think he caught his ear. Now, uh -oh. let's just <coughs> take this very quietly. <laughs> Come down. Come down. Close. Could you take him out a bit? Up a bit. Come. Now, when we want the dogs to sit, we just give them a sit signal. Sit. Come on. Good boy. Come. Come. Close. Wait a moment. Let's do it again. Come on, love. He's watching that other dog. Come on. Sit. Good boy. Then when we want them to go down, we give a down signal. Down. Right down. Good boy. Then, if he wants to come, close. If you want him to wait, wait. Wait. Sit. Wait. <laughs> no, he's not trained. Then you hold him. Come. I don't want to talk to that other dog. Come. Good boy. Come on. Come. Sit. Stay. <laughs> and I hold him. And then I want him to come up to the front. I should tap my legs and call him up. 
Sit. That, that's fantastic. Good boy. Right. Yes, I know. Now we'll try one more with this little dog. This little dog is half an Alsatian, half a German Shepherd, and half a Corgi. So I don't know which is going to be the most obedient. I think you've got a problem. There's three halves there. <laughs> Come on, love. I don't know what your name is. Come on. Oh, it's... Come on. Come on. His name is Ugly. Sit. <laughs> Sit. Good boy. <laughs> down. And we put him down by lifting one leg and pushing the other <coughs> shoulder. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> Come, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Come. Come. Good boy. Now, would you like to try? <laughs> Hang on, can I get, let me get it. I want to get a dog so that I can... Join Will you it. try this one? You have a, oh, here you are. What's his name? I don't know. What's the name of this dog? Muppet. This is, this is Muppet. Are you going to try now? Well, no, you should. Uh, no, you do it. You want me to do no, it? No, yes, I've done enough. Okay. Now, you hold your lead in one hand. Yes. Come here, Muppet. And you, you tap your leg and you say, walkies, and go off. <laughs> I tap my leg and say walkie. Which side is she supposed to be on? Left side. Left side. Come over here, Muppet. Muppet, come here. Walkies! <laughs> now you say sit. 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 That's right. Okay. Now you say you can say stay or wait. So okay. Come in front and I'll stay with him. So oh, you'll stay with him. You yes. want me to say? Just okay. say wait. Muppet, stay. Wait. <laughs> Yes, leave him. Walk away and leave him. Stay. Wait. Wait. Good boy. Come here. Come here. Now, I think I'd like you all to walk round. Will you take that one first? Because he might. Would you take him round? Yes, sure. yes. Off you go. <laughs> he hasn't got it. No, round the other way. Round the other way. Round that way, dear. That way. Come on, walkie. Come on. Lead in the other hand. Lead in the other hand. Now I want you all to give the sit signal. Sit. 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 The other hand. Sit. 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 Good boy. Sit, stay. Stay, sit. <laughs> well now, would you like to tell him to stay and walk away? Would you like to tell him to stay and stay? You will tell him to stay and walk away. Stay. This one? Come on, love. Sit. Stay. Stay. <laughs> stay. Stay. You want me to walk away too? Well, uh, he doesn't know you very well, Stay. so would you Stay. like to walk further away? Stay. 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 There you are. Stay. Go back to your dogs and love them. <laughs> there, praise them. <laughs> I think that's quite lovely, except I'd like to see Bert just make the dog sit once. Sit. <laughs> sit. Well, you see, the thing is, I haven't got a choke chain for him. Wait a minute. Oh, you that's can, good. You can wrestle him if you want, but <laughs> you, would no. you like to see him stay? Yeah. Stay. Sit. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. He hasn't got the right choke chain. Sit. sit. Good boy. Stay. Down. Now, stay. Look at how she has control. Is that amazing <laughs> or not? Down. I think that's brilliant. Barbara Amazing. Woodhouse, ladies and gentlemen, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> this, um, this beautiful ladies' program will be starting on Channel 9. You'll be looking for it and see when it does start. And uh, as you can see, I think it's magic that a person can have that sort of contact with animals. And I think you're wonderful. I really do. It's beautiful. <laughs> Barbara Woodhouse, thank you. We'll be back. Daryl Summers going to sing. Pete Smith has some movie reviews. We got a lot of.
not a show yet. Okay. Thanks, Rick. With Christmas Sunday, we thought it would be a good idea to recap on some of the HPM Industries products we've shown you. Now, not only is Bert going to show you these products, but he's also going to tell you what HPM means. No, I don't know what it means. But you first up, we've got the power mate. Now, that is the portable power unit that can be plugged into your normal power point and then hung out of reach on the wall for around $14. Yeah, spot on, Bert. But I tell you what, it can also accommodate up to four household appliances at once. You see, yep. you've got the four. And ones. next... HPM's decorator range, the range of snap-on, snap-off colour plates oh, for yeah. switches that you can wallpaper to, to match your decor, or you can buy them in a number of different finishes. Yeah, and the cost is only around $3, That's Bertram. That's right. Oh, I also remember uh, something we did about dimmer mat. Dimmer mat? Was oh, that? yes. Now, dimmer mat alters the brightness or darkness of your room simply by applying fingertip pressure, like so. Look at that. See? The light goes on. Beautifully. And goes on again. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just by your little fingertip on that metal plate. See it dim slowly but surely, and come up again slowly but surely. HPM Industries products are available throughout Australia from electricians, electrical stores, and leading hardware stores. Yes, indeed. Yes, yes, yes. It's yes, a yes. great Christmas present for the home. Yes, indeed. A terrific Christmas present for the home. That is the light. It's not me. Wait a minute. Ah, yeah, that's, better. that's better. Now it's off. HPM, keep on plugging. Do they keep on plugging? You've got the touch, you see. You've yeah. always had the touch. Yeah. You always have. Oh, it's always. Have. Thank you very much and welcome back. I hope, uh, I hope and trust you're, you're enjoying our last show and that uh, you're enjoying the full two hours of it. By the time we get down to the end, I think we'll all be exhausted, but we'll have a lovely time. Here's one of our favorite performers and a guy that is going to probably be a regular with us next year, we hope. Uh, he's becoming more popular with every appearance on television. Daryl Summers, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Sir. Thank you. Okay, what do you got? By the way, it wasn't my dog. That it wasn't was your Phil dog. Lambert, your, your number one cameraman. Yeah, there. Phil it's behind the camera. It's called China. China, yes. And it is very undisciplined. Beautiful dog. Oh, it sat down for me. Did it? Just to stand on their tails. That's another yeah, one. Yeah, right. Another <laughs> method. <laughs> what do you got for us tonight? I've got a couple watch. of commercials. As you know, we have a Media Watch segment in uh, Hey Hey It's Saturday. Yeah. And I've got a couple for you. One that we have shown on uh, Hey Hey. And I think everyone is aware of Alan Seal and the whiskers. Did you get, did your cat get his whiskers today? Alan right. Seal. That's the one that whistles when he speaks. Yes. 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 <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll just show the commercial. Now, pick the fault if you can. Everyone at home, everyone in the studio, have a look, see if you can pick the fault. Alan Seal, did your cat get his whiskers today? Now, there he is with his little plant. It's like asking if my spathophyllum cleaver by Mr. <laughs> Staley Walker. It's beautiful when the straight line's hold up so funnily, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So I always make sure. There he goes with his plant. Now watch carefully. It has lots of nourishment and goodness. And all I have to do to stop her now, digging my plants is keep, tap on the can. Keep looking. Did you get your whiskers Right, now the, today, the fault baby? has occurred. Did anyone pick the fault? Yes. The spoon. The spoon. <laughs> Not actually the fault that I was looking for. <laughs> what's, wrong with the spoon? what's wrong with the spoon? The spoon. Yeah. Wasn't in the can. Well, look. We, to, to cut time, to cut time, we will tell you the, the fault. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the fault is in the pussy cat. Yes, have a close look at the pussy. Now, here we go. There we go. That's Blackie in the bushes. Now, look at the markings around Blackie. He has markings only on one side. Then, when you see Blackie trottle up here to... That's not Blackie there, that's Alan Seal. <laughs> look at the markings. It's a different pussy cat, and now I ask you... Is it really Alan Seal? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen his markings. Right? And back to the original cap there, you see. Right, okay. It's simple well, you little faults. Now, why would they have 
a different cat in the com maybe his cat wouldn't eat the maybe stuff. The I don't know. Not maybe the the wouldn't enter into it, Don. Maybe but there a are stunt cat. Yes, a stunt cat. Yes, there just might be. Possibly. Yes. You have uh, more. I have one more for you. It's oh, I trust you, person. Well, Peter yes. Bensley and Junie McBurney are going to hate me. They are two of the cast of Young Doctors. They do appear in the Palm Olive Gold commercial. Let's have a look at that one. I'll point the faults out as we go. Oh, okay. Now there he is in bed with the uh, with Judy, and he's reaching for his cake of soap. And there it is. Now watch the way he's holding the soap. Watch carefully. He's holding the soap like so, and in the next shot, he's got his forefinger or whatever on the soap in a different position. We keep rolling. Watch the soap. Also, now it's changed. Also, look at her hand. Where it, her hand is touching her face or her hair. And now, where is her hand? <laughs> it's beside the pillow. She either ripped her hair out or she just changed position. <laughs> you guys are now really picky. Again. <laughs> yes, we, we're sort of the, the Ralph Na Nader of commercials, I guess. But Do people picked that. That was the actual fault. We don't really have to go any... F oh, he's getting back in bed. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, it's nice to know that he made it back there. Neatness. You know, nice. yes. Neatness is a virtue. <laughs> yes, it counts. They yes. always learned that in school. Certainly right. does. Yes, yeah. right. So there, there are lots of faults in commercials, if anyone has a fault. Uh, the last show for the year, of course, but they, we have another few to go on Hey Hey It's Saturday. Mm -hmm. If you have a fault, please send it in. We'll You'd have a look at it. You'd be flat out finding faults in Bert's and my commercials. Um, I wish I could lead into one of yours. I <laughs> but you, uh, well, Bert has done a couple. You haven't done many since the carpet no, I commercial. Can, yeah, I did a, what, the carpet. That was a That's right, yeah. No. You're going to sing for us now? This is your new Look. single. Yes, single. Yes. yes. What's River for? Thank Let you. Let me introduce it, okay? All right. You go over there. He's going to sing for us. <laughs> this, uh, this is, um, this is Daryl's uh, new single. And in just a moment, Pete Smith is going to come in and he's going to show us uh, some previews of some of the motion pictures that are going to be showing over the Christmas break, especially the ones the kids would probably want to see. Uh, Daryl's current new single is called What's Forever For? And uh, it's moving very well, I might add. How about a hand? Daryl Summers, right. <laughs> Welcome back. You've had a taste of the spectacular action in a new James Bond movie, um, and two of its stars, Chaim Topol, who made Fiddler on the Roof, such an outstanding success on stage and screen, and uh, Australian actress Cassandra Harris, who is the latest victim of the master spy's charms, and she is the femme fatale of the movie as well. Please make them welcome. Here are Topol and Cassandra Harris. Thank you. Well, I nearly didn't get here. All my luggage was mislaid. You're kidding. What? No, uh, just before we came, we couldn't find the dress. So uh, one oh. of your Australian designers has sent this beautiful dress around. Well, that's like, I think you look quite lovely. That's lovely. all right. Uh, that's upsetting when you have all your own things and they, and they don't show up or something. Oh, uh, it was. It yes. was. And I was a bit worried. I didn't know if the fashions were going to be right up that's to the, date That's yet. the guy that misplaced your luggage. We just, <laughs> yes, we just shot him. You know? <laughs> and how are you? Uh, I'm very well. I got all my luggage and I brought it from... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> This is, of course, this is, doing a James Bond movie is a far cry from Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, has that been um, uh, a, a milestone in your career or a millstone around your neck, Fiddler? Uh, 
No, uh, it's uh, a very important point in my career, and uh, I'm very happy it happened to me. And I wish uh, every colleague of mine uh, to have one in his uh, pocket, like uh, Fiddler on the Roof, mm. uh, that uh, an actor can be identified with. And uh, I hope I'll have another one. People are always humming the song to you, aren't they? Uh, the different songs from the movie, especially if I was a rich man. I said, oh, don't. You're looking at me like, uh, I know what you mean. <laughs> Do, do they always do that sure, to you? Sure, yeah? Sure, and I love it. Oh, it must be great. Yeah, to do it. Cassandra, uh, they tell me that you, uh, Sammy Davis, had something to do with discovering you. Is that right? Uh, not discovering me, but I did meet him about 10 years ago, this was, when I first went to London. And he asked if I, he could take my photo, and he did, and appeared on the front page of the Telegraph supplement. Oh, fantastic. Did it help? Well, it did, yes, huh? of course. It was wonderful. And where, where were you from here? From Sydney. From Sydney, mm. yes. Avalon. And yeah, born in, uh, in Sydney? Yes, yes. Oh, and what's it like doing a Bond movie? Is it as, uh, as much fun as they say it is? Uh? Oh, it's more than that. It's really <laughs> more, is it really? Yeah. More than they say. Well, there's always all sorts of special effects and action going on, I suppose. And, uh, well, it's, uh, it's, I, I mean it. It's, uh, it's a film that uh, I just came in. It was the first James Bond that I did. I hope to do another one. Uh -huh. And uh, it's, you're really being pampered by the producer by Cobby Broccoli. I mean, it's nice to work on a big budget film. Mm. And uh, he is there to make sure that you are having fun. Mm -hmm. He and Roger, I mean, it's a kind of a good partnership between Cobby Broccoli and Roger Moore uh, to make sure that everyone on the unit mm. and the actors are really having fun. And we did have fun, and I hope it comes across when you see the movie. I'm sure it will. Uh, Roger Moore is a fun person to work with. We interviewed him, uh, I think it was last year, the year before, from Switzerland. And he's a, just a terrific guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he always seems to be up to something, uh, oh, you know, he is. for he's a, a laugh. He's a practical joker, isn't he? Uh, yeah. Yes. We just have to thank Mr. Merivale for going to all that trouble to bring this dress. John Merivale. Oh, that, yes. that's John Merivale. Yes. Oh, that's lovely. OK. Well, listen, thanks very much. You'll be, you'll be, uh, how long are you going to be over here? Uh, you're promoting the movie at the moment. Uh. Another week. Mm. Yes. Okay, well, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have a Thank great you. stay. And Thank it's you. terrific meeting you. And if you ever come back here again, I'm going to force you to sing out here. We'll do something together, yeah. I think. <laughs> Thank you. you and I would love to sing with Topol. It would be good. And I won't tell you what I... Never mind, I won't even go into that. <laughs> nice to meet you, Cassandra. I'll tell you what, it's the Bond movies are back there. It's sort of a way of life, I think. If you're a James Bond fan, you will always be a James Bond fan. Yeah, nice. <laughs> nice, quiet little film. Thank Bobo and Cassandra for coming in. When we come back, we've got the Tim Evans, my favorite comic, and the Peter Couples fan. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Thank you very much. Yeah. Teresa is on vacation, so uh, or on holidays, whatever she's doing. This is Keith Barrington from Bombex, South Australia, to show us more about the fabulous Bombex. Say hello to Keith. Hello. Good to see you. Don, ask me what you can't do with Barmex. Yeah, what can, okay, what can't you do with Barmex? Well, <clears throat> you can't have uh, any washing, uh, messy washing up. Mm -hmm. You can't make a great noise, and you can't buy Barmex in retail shops. Mm, and you don't have large pieces to fit together either, do you? Where do you buy Barmex, by the way? Barmex is sold exclusively from our own outlets in every capital city oh. and country representatives. Okay, well, tell me what it does. Well. Uh, you mix with Barmix in any containers like these. Mm -hmm. Barmix chops, onions and the like. It whisks the old coffee and water. Oh, yeah. Work up a nice Aerates, broth there. Aerates, right. Yeah. Whisks, eggs and the like to perfection. Mm -hmm. Grinds coffee beans and nuts and oh, the like. Oh, yes, I've seen her do that with that. Yeah, yeah. Makes cakes. How about that one? Mm -hmm. Just mix in any of these ones here. Yeah. And purees in the saucepan on the stove. And you also get the uh, the fabulous V slicer from uh, from Barmex as well, the, the the vegetable slicer, right. whatever else you want to slice. Yes. Don, for Christmas you must order Barmex now. Okay, that's right. And I'll tell you what, uh, whenever you see this product and you see expert people demonstrating, you'll know that it's the real Barmex. And it's not available in retail shops, only when you <laughs> see Barmex demonstrating. Okay, phone Barmex on these numbers around Australia to order. And thank Keith very much thank for coming you. on show. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello. 
Hello, hello. Was that an echo in here? Yeah, I didn't know where that came from. Tim Evans is uh, one of my writers. He's also a, 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 a very, very funny uh, stand-up comic by himself. He's very musical as well, and he's going to come in here tonight and do one of his little spots for us. So I think it's our Rejects. Is that what he's doing? Yes, Rejects. Anyway, say hello. Tim Evans, here you go. <laughs> Yes. Well, they told no, me no. we don't have much time, so we're going to move it oh, right now. Now, what are you going to do? You uh, were doing lines of the future the last time you were. But was... No, what we're going to do tonight, uh, because it's the end of the year, and it quite often Don rejects lines that Mike and I write, and, uh, you know, kind of hurts you a little inside if you think they're funny, and uh, stuff that's just left over. So I thought you, the public, deserved the chance to hear it. Right? Right. That's what I like, indifference. <laughs> okay, we're here. Now, uh, here's one that was knocked back on uh, Monday night for Don to come out and say, welcome to the show, and how about the big news from Buckingham Palace? Princess Di is thrilled, Prince Charles is delighted, the Queen is ecstatic, and Franco Cazzo is offered to be the godfather. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, see? Hey, uh, this, this one was knocked back tonight. Welcome to our final show, and by way of celebrating, right after the show, we're gonna have a do-it-yourself chicken and champagne supper. We're gonna give each of you an egg and a kilo of grapes. <laughs> You were right. Yeah. Uh, here's another one. Welcome to the show live from Richmond, where today a local tobacconist came up with a marijuana cigarette with a menthol filter so you can get high and stay cool at the same time. Okay, here's some general Excuse lines. Excuse me, I never saw that long. <laughs> i got to save a couple for right. Here's some general lines that were knocked back on guests. Uh, uh, last week, you might have remembered, Peter Russell Clark was going to demonstrate how by using the cheaper cuts of meat, that you could feed six people for 60 cents a head, right? Six people, 60 cents a head. So I wrote, first you buy $3.60 worth of pal, and he wouldn't do it. Oh, uh, then, right. <laughs> when Phyllis Diller was keep, on the keep show, on, keep moving, uh, keep yes, moving. we'll keep going. When Phyllis Diller was on the show, I wanted him to say that while Phyllis was getting changed in her dressing room, a peeping Tom threw up on her windowsill. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't do that one either. Or, or, or that when Phyllis was a kid, her mother had to tie a pork chop around her neck so the dog would play with her. <laughs> now, another one was for him to say that my next door neighbor, Mrs. Monahan, told me that she hates daylight saving time. She said her husband used to wake up every morning at seven o'clock feeling very sexy, and now it happens at the bus stop. <laughs> doesn't like religious jokes. Uh, and, and of course, people tell us jokes from time to time for Don. And uh, here's one from John Blackman. Uh, he won't do jokes either. But this is from John Blackman about a guy walking into a pub carrying a dog with no legs. And he walks up and sets a dog down on the bar. And he says, give me a beer. The barman gives him a beer. And he says, that's an unusual looking dog. He says, what do you call it? And the guy says, it doesn't matter. He wouldn't come anyway. <laughs> we had sent in was that 12 Irishmen attacked a German girl and she screamed, nine, nine, so three of them went home. <laughs> Two Irishmen went for a job as a coal miner and the first one goes in and the foreman says, have you had any experience? He said, oh, sure. He said, been coal miner for years. He said, how far down have you worked? He said, 2,000 feet. He says, fine, leave your name outside and I'll let you know. And he goes outside to his mate, Mick. He said, look, I told him I worked at 2,000 feet. He wasn't too impressed. You better add to that. So the second one goes in. He says, uh, have you had any experience? He said, oh, I've been a coal miner all my life. And he said, well, how far down have you worked? He said, 5,000 feet. He says, 5,000 feet? What kind of lamps do you use at that depth? He said, I wouldn't know. I only worked a day shift. <laughs> uh, going quickly. Four, four hey, minutes. Four minutes. Four, four minutes. Four minutes, a, four young, minutes. A, young couple, <laughs> a young couple get married, and on their wedding night, he runs into the room, seeing the motel, and he turns on the footy replays. And his new bride says, you mean to tell me that you like football better than you like me? And he says, oh, yeah. He says, but I like you better than I like cricket. <laughs> <laughs> That's some, That's some closing one. quotes, closing quotes. Okay, closing. Here we go, closing quotes, into the show quotes that he does. If an enemy strikes you, turn the other cheek. But if he strikes that cheek, hit him with a crowbar. Right. Okay. <laughs> the words of Ronnie Corbett, who once said, I hate dancing close with Dolly Parton. Because I can't see the music, and I can't, no. I can't, I can't see, see where I'm going, and I can't hear the music. I did it just like you. Know. That's, right. That's not fair. The words of, quick, two more. The words of Tom Waits, who once said, never mind the time, what year is it? <laughs> and finally, finally, folks, a funny thing that happened down the road at the Bridge Hotel. A group of bikies walked in and said, 38 beers, and give one to the guy at the end of the bar with a broken leg. 
And the fellow at the end of the bar says, thanks for the beer, mate, but I haven't got a broken leg. And the bikey says, you will have if you don't buy the next round. <laughs> <laughs> Ten of us, everybody. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let me tell you about these fellas. The Peter Couples Band has been performing around most of the smaller venues over the past several months. Uh, that was until recently. And then uh, they supported both the Doobie Brothers and Leo Sayer on their prospective recent Australian tours. Now it looks as though they're going to have a national hit on their hands with their new single. Would you please welcome the Peter Couples Band with Fear of Thunder. Peter Couples Band. Look out. a lot of noise in the pop world. Um, we're going to go for a break now. When we come back, we're going to have the wheel with Bert and I. We're going to fool around as much as we can and have a good time with him. And also, we, we, we have a, a closing finale tonight that we hope you'll stick around for, okay? It, it'll be something you'll enjoy, I think. Uh, some nice music and, uh, and uh, all of our folks just getting together out here. So hang in there with us. The wheel's coming up. Me and Bertram are going to warm up. Hang on. We'll be right back. Yeah. Tonight on Don's Wheel, you could win the all-new 1982 Toyota Corolla CS Manual sedan, valued at $7,350 on the road. Your new Toyota comes to you with the compliments of pit stop motors, South Yaris and Kilda and Elstomite, one of Australia's leading Toyota dealers. And remember, pit stop motors want your business. And the complete Stanley Rogers King's Patent Cutlery setting, plus a Westminster Fine China dinner setting for eight persons. Stanley Rogers and Westminster guarantee complete replaceability service. And the new Dagon Flon Heat Split System Console. It cools you in summer, warms you even at minus five degrees centigrade, valued at $2,500 installed. And a week for two at the Alice Springs Federal Hotel Casino, flying with TAA the friendly way. Your seven days include a luxury suite, plus gaming chips to try your luck. Over $1,700 in value, and this pure heat package. Two electric space heaters from a pure heat range of 19 different models, plus $350 cash to help warm up your winter. Do you realize, Don? The last show of the year. 504 times we've been together on the wheel. 504? 504. 504. Isn't and this that is the. Amazing. And I promise you, Doc. Did I? Did I well, did it, you lose the batteries for that, did you? It's not, isn't it going on enough? No. Yes, it is. If you look very closely, it is. Oh, is it really? I yeah. was joking about that. Let me see. Oh, yes. If you cut. Can we have the lights down? Take the lights down. And you'll see, look, see it flashing? Well, it's terrific on dark nights. They say there's Burton, it's all green for go. <laughs> That's quite 
Mr. Crystal Mentally, from actually. our props department made that for me. I was joking when I said that. I thought it was just a sort of a large badge. You, oh, you're going to get emotional, aren't you? You always do. I, at the oh, end I, of the... Always do the last. I know it's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll try and hold up. Okay, it'll be. Okay. I thought your opening number was terrific, Doug. Yes, thank you very much. I love don't, don't worry about anything. I mean, you stay here and do the radio program and all the other stuff. I'm just going to Los I, Angeles. I'm going to be brave, Don. I won't miss you. Okay, don't worry about it. I won't miss you, Don. I promise I won't. Okay, I'm going to Los Angeles. <laughs> no, I don't. Would you like to meet our you first stay contestant? Here and do your work. I'm just going. I'll go to New York. Yeah, and, and have a good time there. I'll go to Hawaii. Look up all the girlfriends. I'll think about and you all the time. Yeah. Listen, uh, what about? I hope people are watching our station yeah. early on the evening to see your promo with your dog, with Shadow. Have we got that upstairs? Would you I would have, really just, like to show if you could grab it, Pete, and we'll show it sometime on the wheel, because it was magnificent. It was completely unrehearsed, mm -hmm. and lots of relay stations wouldn't have seen it. And it I know fun, wasn't it? you're because taking it home to show your mum, aren't you? Yes, yeah, sure, she'd yeah, love yeah, it. Sure. Our first that. contestant is Joy uh, Dumopolis of Medway Road in Craigieburn. Dumopolis. Hello, Joy. <laughs> nice to see you. I know that progress is pronouncing the next. How are you? Hello, my Are you married? Yes. You are. Is he here with you? No, he's home with a sore back. Oh, good. He's home with a sore back. Yeah. With a sore back? How did, he get, how did he get that? Huh? He slipped a disc. Oh, at that's work. no good. At work. What was he playing? Roofs uh, in the roof. Oh, well, no, I thought no, it might have been sport, because there's a lot no. of slip discs in sport. Well, sure. Well, there's a lot of slip discs doing anything. President Kennedy many years ago slipped a disc bending over to... Uh, put a shovel in the ground yeah. and he had trouble for a year or something. Yeah. I suppose. Look, you, can, you can just be doing anything, but all of a sudden it, it just catch it catches you. Yeah. I mean, you, could, you could bend over like Lou. that. Lou? Lou, all the best to you, Lou. I hope your disc uh, gets better yeah. real soon. And if it does, bring it in. Lou, we'd like to have was a look at it. One of his favorites? Yeah. Was, it, was it Frank Sinatra or Perry Carmo? Who was it? Yeah. What, you know, what number would you like, Joy? Three. Number three. We hope it's a car tonight. Why? So yeah, around oh, here. here we go. Good luck. Oh. All fingers crossed. Be more work for you, Joy. But life will be easier with this General Electric package. The amazing GE Pot Scrubber with its penetrating three-level dishwashing action and money-back guarantee, plus the GE 290 DMX full-length freezer with all the space you've ever wanted. Who plays Dave Sullivan in Channel 9's The Sullivans? Paul Cronin. Paul yes, indeed. How's that for easy way of getting the car? All the best, Joy. And Merry so, Christmas to you. Easy, and happy New Year. And also tonight on Don's Wheel, you have the chance of winning these, these fabulous, fabulous prizes. prizes. You could win the Intellivision Intelligent Television, a sophisticated computer video game oh, capable of providing hours of entertainment. Also a diamond pendant to the value of $1,200 from Theodore Fine Jewelry, renowned for the most beautiful jewelry in Melbourne, maybe the world. That's right. Also a $1,200 wardrobe from Anthony Squires, the international award winner. They dress Don and myself, as you can well yeah. see. And if they can dress us, they can dress you. Certainly can. Also a week's holiday for two at the new Green Mound Gold Coast Super Resort, flying TAA the friendly way. Greenmount offers loads of facilities for a really memorable holiday. And Don, our last contestant for 1981, our very last one is Mr. Duncan McLaren. Excuse me. Yeah. You wake up, Sir Eric. Is he still here? He's asleep, I think. Oh, Sir Eric is still here. Yes. Isn't that not... Eric, I've got beaut news for you. We had a phone... Can you hear me? Yes. I we had a phone call a little earlier in the evening and you're going to be preserved by the National Trust. <laughs> By the way, we thought we'd tell you this. While you were asleep, World War II ended. <laughs> Look at those eyebrows. Every summer, he has to put a fire break there. <laughs> a lovely man, isn't it? I didn't realise you were still here. You asked me to wait. Oh, OK, right, sir. Do you want to dink home again? <laughs> a second. Are you sitting there all by yourself, Sir Eric? I've got Lynn here. Oh, of course. Hello, Lynn. Oh, that's one of our publicity ladies. Sure, sure. Yes, yeah. Eric, Eric got of the job. Wink, yeah. wink. Yeah. Nudge, nudge, say no. Oh, yeah. Is Lady Pierce watching? Oh, it's a sad thing. Yeah. Our second contestant is, oh, is Duncan McLaren from Gibson Street in West Beach. And just before we say hello to Duncan, seriously, because we have done lots and lots of lines on Sir Eric tonight, I've worked in television for a long time, so has Don. And I think I speak on behalf of Don in saying this. If we have met... Uh, a better man, a better person in television, uh, doubts would, uh, would fill my mind than Sir Eric Pierce. Lovely having you here, sir. Wonderful man. Yeah, it's Duncan McLaren.
Shadow or did Shadow come? Is he on the set? Uh, yeah, yeah. We've got a, a Shadow. Here's Don and Shadow. This happened this afternoon. Who's that, Shadow? You got it? Tonight at the special time at 9 o'clock. Is it 9 o'clock? <laughs> 9 o'clock, yeah. 9 o'clock, we've got a two-hour edition of the show. I hope you'll be joining us. Stuart Granger and Topol and Cassandra Harris from the new James Bond movie. And Daryl Summers. Daryl Summers going to be here? Hey, is Daryl Summers going to be here? Yes. And you know what else? Kevin Lynette and Peter Russell Clark and Peaceman and Barbara Woodhouse. Oh, you like Barbara She's going to train dogs. You know what Barbara Woodhouse? Be sure and join us. It's the final show of the year at the special time at 9 o'clock. Tell them about 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock tonight. Two hours. Tell them 9 o'clock Give me five. Okay. Realize. <laughs> I, I think I'm pretty right. We won't play it again for a time. But I think you checked that. And I think you, when you said what time, I, I'm sure Shadow barked nine times. Did he? For nine o'clock, I think. Hang on, I might have a new act. Yeah, yeah who knows? <laughs> Poor old Duncan McLaren, I hope he's still there. Did he do the wheel? Of Gibson Street in... Me and Shadow in the wheel? No, it wouldn't work. Well, be good. Would... Oh, come Are on. you kidding? They never answer a question. He'd sit there going... <laughs> Duncan McLaren of Gibson Street. Please say hello, Duncan. Hello, Duncan. How are you doing? How are you, mate? Thank you. Good. Very nice to talk to you. And thank you for joining us on the last show. And I hope you can win a prize because the car is still available. Thank you very much. Would you like to say hello to Bert? I sure would, yeah. Okay, Duncan. Hiya, Duncan. Hey, Bert. What's the song everybody sings to you now? Uh, I'd like to have a beer with Duncan. I would have thought that too, yeah. <laughs> what number do you want, mate? Uh, number six, thanks. Number six. Well, this is the last chance. I'm not allowed to help. I helped a little on the 500th performance, but I can't tonight. But all fingers are crossed. I hope it's the car for you. Thank you. Good luck. Here Good luck, go. Doug, and I'd a like to have a beer with Doug. Magic to no. Duncan? To be. Yeah. Do you sew? Uh, not lately. <laughs> Are you married, Duncan? Yes, uh, Bert. What's your wife's name? Helen. Helen. Well, I'll tell you what, it's something particularly nice for Helen. It's the matchless uh, Faf electronic sewing machine with uh, more inbuilt features than any other in the world, plus the incredible time saving Faf rotary ironer, which irons three times faster than by hand. The total value is $1,825. How's that? Very good. How long since you've. Whereabouts are you from again? Uh, West West Beach, South Australia. Adelaide. How long since you've been away, you and the wife? Uh, or since Christmas, last Christmas. Ah, oh, well. Going away this year? Yeah, hope to. Ah, uh, oh, good. Okay, all the best. How long Thank was you. he away now? <laughs> Hello? Hi. In which Australian state was the Premier removed from office yesterday? Tasmania. Tasmania is right. Enjoy your prize, okay? <laughs> Thanks, brother. There's no barrel. That's it. There's no barrel. No barrel. No entries for next year. There's no barrel. Look after yourself. Well, I love to spend these, these moments, moments with you. As friend to friend, I'm sorry they're through. Uh, you, a, a song of your choice. I will give you the opportunity to go out to the commercial break on a song of your choice. And I want a little sell job. Okay. <clears throat> I love you truly, truly. <laughs> Look at Eric. He is furious. <laughs> I'll see you at the end of the show. <laughs> All right. Take it easy. Very good, ladies and gentlemen. We will be back with our finale and our closing. Hang in there. It certainly has been a um, sort of a highlight year for us. Um, we kicked off in a not too brilliant manner, I suppose. And uh, I said this a couple of shows ago. And uh, we took our our share of uh, bashing from uh, the media and a lot of other people. Um, I just noticed this. We're not supposed to talk about what kind of ratings you get on television, but I just noticed we did very, very well on the, the last ones. And I suppose, I, or I hope, that we will do very, very well on this one tonight. It's been a, a great year for me, a lot of highlights. 
And also, um, I learned a lot about a lot of the people that we work with in here. We're going to do a closing now. And when we get to the end of this, they're going to roll what we call in the business the credits. And lots of times, I think a lot of people see the credits coming up. They get up and go make a cup of tea or wait for the next program or take a run off to wherever they have to. <laughs> and, uh, but I want you to pay close attention to the credits tonight because they consist of a lot of people who put in a lot of time and a lot of effort and give very little credit for a lot of the stuff. It's great for the front men, for Bert, myself. We stand up here. If we do well, we can walk around and take the bows. If we do lousy, we can always point our fingers at them. <laughs> but uh, I don't think either he or I really do that. Uh, they mean a lot to us. Uh, there's some people in here that won't be with us anymore. Adrian uh, Della Virgin, our floor manager, is leaving. He's going to go up to Queensland, and, and I thank him very much for stepping in the breach. He wasn't the floor manager at the beginning of this year. Adrian was uh, assistant floor manager, and he, uh, when the time came for him to take over the job, uh, he did it gloriously, and he did it very, very well. And he stepped in, and he's just been superb. He's leaving. He's going up to Queensland. We hope to better, bigger and better things, but I thank you, Adrian, uh, very, very much. We have a, a superb uh, bunch of fellas uh, in the sound department and our set designs absolutely knock them out overseas whenever they see any of them. I'm proud of them. Of course, our artists and, uh, and our dancers. Uh, uh, one other person I want you to see. That you never, where's Tony? Tell Tony to come out here. Is he back there? Just tell Tony to come out. So you never, you never get a chance to see him. I always talk about him and I always kid about him. But I'll tell you what, he really puts the stuff together. All those dance numbers and production numbers, this is the guy that does it. Tony Bartuccio. Say it. Say it. Anyway, like we said, we're proud of them, and I'm really happy about this year. It's been terrific, and uh, I think this particular song that we're going to do can sum up more than anything uh, the way that we all feel about this program and this place and the traditions of this place and, uh, and the way that we think we should be upholding them. And uh, anyway, you give it a listen. I think you'll, uh, you'll know what we're talking about. Jeffa? Looking back through all the years Through the good times and the tears That made our memories Now the picture I can see Has set my heart at ease Heaven knows we had it good We had it bad but knock on wood We both survived the best we could Though there were times we thought we never would as long as we keep believing Then staying means more than leaving As long as we're living and breathing I believe in you Just believe in me too Now we've seen so many friends and beginnings turn to ends and watch them walk away It's a wonder you and I have what we have today Cause heaven knows sometimes we swore We had enough but thank the Lord We always stopped one step before We took that step that took us out the door As long as we keep believing And standing more than leaving As long as we're living and breathing I believe in you Just believe in me too And we can change and we can grow As long as we both know No matter what And if we keep our trust, and if we keep our faith, we free the two of us, we're bound to make it. As long as we keep believing, good standing's more than leaving. As long as we're leaving and breathing, I believe in you, just believe.
Australia. Thank you. We'll see you in February. Thank you, Peter Feynman. We love you. Fred and I do. Good night, everybody. Everybody sing it. Hold up the words for that. As long as you